Hi everyone, welcome to another video. This video is going to focus on um, a couple things. It's an introduction to drawing with a range of value. Uh, we're going to be using graphite pencils for that. Um, and uh, it's also going to be about um, drawing organic objects and drapery. So uh, we're gonna talk about that. Um, but I want to show you my setup first so you can see what I'm seeing before I sit down and focus my camera on uh, my drawing. Um, and I wanna talk about materials as well. So as you can see, I'm in my room. I set up my little still life here. I've got, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got seven objects plus some drapery. Um, so this is my suggestion of the items to choose. I would choose a few simple items such as the um, cubes and uh, some fruit. Um, if you can find something similar, you know, whatever fruit or vegetables that you have in the kitchen, feel free to grab some things like that. Or if you have a simple um, vase or a cup from the kitchen, something um, to kind of give some structured objects, but we're mixing it with the organic. So the organic objects I have would be the apple, so any kind of fruit or veggie, and um, I have a house plant here. Um, so if you have any um, house plant or cactus or um, anything like that works, if you don't, that's totally fine too. Basically, the drapery is going to be plenty of practice of drawing organic objects. Um, so I'm not too worried about the, the objects that you're choosing for your still life. As long as you have some drapery in there, that is going to be enough of a challenge to, um, to cover this topic. So um, now, uh, I don't really care the type of cloth that you use but I would suggest something that's plain. So something that doesn't have a pattern on it um, because patterns are just gonna be way too detailed um, for this uh, stage. We're, we're doing an introduction um, to drapery and organic uh, objects and this is an introduction to drawing with a range of value. So I think uh, let's just keep things simple for ourselves, right? And also notice that the background and the space that I'm placing items on, those are also just blank, simple um, things. So uh, I'm using uh, gray paper and a white foam board. Use whatever you want. I mean, I have a black little table that I'm working on here, so that would be fine too. Um, I just wanted to be able to see the cast shadows clearly, so I was worried that the black, they wouldn't show. So. Um, just a side note, um, Dollar Tree sells uh, foam board. So that's where I got that big piece of foam board. So if you're just looking for a really easy uh, backdrop to throw behind your drawing setups, um, I would highly suggest uh, checking out Dollar Tree. They also have like poster boards and stuff like that in different colors. So if you want just a big piece of paper to put either behind or under your objects, um, I would recommend that. Um, also, of course, if you have some extra cloth that's just a blank, you know, plain color, you could use that as well. Um, so anyway, for setting up, of course, um, you want to consider all the things that we learned in uh, composition um, for getting a nice, dynamic, yet balanced setup here. Um, so, uh, but again, uh, you want some simple objects and some slightly more complex objects. You don't want to get too crazy with the, the detail in your objects quite yet. Um, so anyway, this is my suggestion. I also have one light source. So I'm gonna back up so you can kind of see what's going on here in my room. Uh, back up as far as I can to show you. Um, so I have one little desk lamp on a, a little chair so that I can put one light source on my setup. Um, I'm gonna sit there in that chair. Because I'm filming, I have a ring light. If I wasn't filming, I would take away that light because that's adding kind of too much light. But of course I have to do that because I'm filming. But for you guys, I would suggest one light source. 
So if you're drawing in your home, um, you know, it's okay if you have a window open or something, but I would suggest not having your other lights in the room on other than one. So you want one kind of place somewhere at the side so that you can get some, um, uh, range of value in your scene and you get some cast shadows. So see these shadows here, those are cast shadows. You can also see there, there's a cast shadow there. You can see on this plant, we have a light and a shadow side. So that's kind of what you're looking for when you're setting up the lighting situation for your setup. So this is the first um, kind of step for this project is finding the objects you wanna draw, make sure you have something to create some drapery. If you don't have cloth like that, um, if you have something like a um, solid color hoodie, like a sweater or something like that, that works too. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, a, a piece of cloth. It could be a piece of clothing. Maybe you have some sweatpants that you could, you know, throw in there and create some, as long as you have some folds uh, in the cloth uh, in your little scene here, um, that's really, um, all you need really. Uh, there are different names of folds. Um, usually for my students, I give a handout um, uh, about like what, you know, what the different types are. I'm not gonna talk about that in this video because it's just gonna get too long. But just in case you're wondering, this kind of way that I've draped the fabric there, that's called a diaper fold. So um, anyway, just, you know, the more you know. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, there, there's different types, like this one here. See how it kind of zigzags back and forth? That's a zigzag fold. Um, anyway, it's not super necessary to know the names of the different folds, but it can be helpful to identify them just to kind of be able to uh, categorize the different parts of the fold in your brain as you're drawing, because this information can get overwhelming when you're trying to draw everything and you're trying to make sense of the information. You know what I mean? But I'm gonna break it down for you. I'm going to show you step-by-step step how to get this done. However, I am gonna start out the drawing like I normally do for all of my drawings from observation, which means I'm gonna start out with a construction drawing. I have a separate video on that, so if you haven't seen that yet, or if you need a refresher, go watch that video uh, first, and then come back here because I'm gonna do the whole construction drawing um, and then I'm gonna start filling in value. So this video is just about filling in the, the value and how to approach that. Um, now I'm going to be using Strathmore 400 series drawing paper. Um, I'm going to be using, um, I think I'm going to use the artist tape to give myself a one inch border around my paper just because it makes for a nice final presentation to have a border around your drawing. So the ruler and the tape is for that. Um, I personally like to use these long barbecue skewers for, uh, as a siding stick for using the siding technique for measuring. Um, if you don't wanna use that, if you have pencils that are long enough, like this is a nice long pencil, you can just use your pencil. Uh, as you can see, I have a range of, um, ignore, ignore the fact that I have a range of brands because I don't care about the brand as long as they're graphite pencils. Um, you just need the range of um, from light to dark with the lead or from hard to soft, right? So the hard leads um, like this 2H, that would be my lightest uh, hard lead pencil. And then I've got a HB, a 2B, a 4B, a 6B. Um, so whatever range that you're working with, as long as you understand the difference that, like for example, my 4B and 6B, these are darker, softer leads. And the 2H and the HB, those are harder, lighter leads. Um, so this is just important when you get into value to, to know the difference so that you kind of know what you might need for different areas. And I'll talk about that when I start demoing, of course. And um, a kneaded eraser, of course, is great to have on hand. Um, I would also suggest like a little piece of scratch paper to rest under your hand um, while you're drawing to keep the paper from smudges because now that we're adding value to your, our drawing, we're gonna get a lot of graphite on the paper and uh, we wanna keep our drawing nice and clean. Um, so that is the intro. Now let's go ahead and get into the demo. 
All right, so uh, as you can see, I laid in um, most of the construction drawing in the same way as I showed in my construction drawing video, um, blocked everything in, uh, drew the shapes as if they are transparent just to get the structure looking good, using the siding technique to check uh, my measurements for good proportions and I feel like I got a good um, balanced composition so I feel comfortable to move forward. Um, so tools that I used um, for the siding technique, um, I used my long stick um, and I also used this tool which is a viewfinder. It's basically just a little frame that you can hold up in front of your still life and look through it just to kind of see what it would look like in a frame. Um, now it kind of works the same way as if you're looking uh, through your phone, like uh, using the camera on your phone um, to kind of get it in a frame. But if you're using that method, you just want to make sure that uh, the frame size is a similar one to your paper size. So in other words, you want a rectangle. Um, you don't want a square, um, you don't want a rectangle that's too short or too long. You want it to be a similar format as your um, paper size so that it will make sense um, what, you know, when you're trying to uh, um, figure out your composition, how everything's going to fit in the space. Um, so anyway, these plastic ones, if you prefer that, they are adjustable. You can get them at Blick Art Materials, or you can make your own out of um, some sort of heavyweight paper, like a cardstock or a construction paper. You just um, cut out a frame, and you can hold up the frame and look at the um, scene through a frame to get an idea of how things will sit in the space. Um, so anyway, uh, and of course, also thumbnail drawing. So that's, uh, that's the way you always want to start out these um, drawings from observations, you know, you, uh, you use these different tools to figure out what is the good starting point, what is a good plan for this drawing. Um, anyway, uh, now let's get into um, uh, drawing with a range of value and I'll try to explain these um, different pencils we have here. So I'm really hoping that um, you'll be able to see, uh, first of all, for my drawing, before I even started, I um, used the ruler and a pencil to give myself a one inch border all the way around. I masked that off with tape. Um, it's up to you if you wanna do that or if you at the end wanna just you know clean up the border with the eraser, that's up to you, but um, I like to use the artist tape, so that's what I did. Um, uh, I went ahead and also gave myself a little value scale here that I'm gonna demonstrate these pencils with a value scale before I get into the actual drawing so that you can see um, the difference between the different pencils, but also I would like for you guys to do this as well. Um, so this will be the first, uh, you know, thing to try out with your pencils to see what they look like to kind of get a feel for the different leads. Um, so basically what I did, because I have five pencils here that I'm going to use, I made myself five one by one inch boxes and this is the upper right hand corner of my drawing that I'm going to do this um, and I uh, labeled them up above uh, with the different uh, pencils that I have. I have a 2H, an HB, a 2B, a 4B, and a 6B. So you can kind of guess that how this is going to turn out. This one will probably be a lot lighter than this one. It's going to be like a range from light to dark, okay? So uh, I'm going to start out with my 2H pencil. So this is my hardest lead pencil in my arrangement here. Um, I really hope that this is in the frame. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, 2H pencil here. Now, uh, of course, I'm going to use the side of my pencil lead. Make sure your pencil is sharpened to a long point. And use a very light touch 
with pencil strokes very close together. So what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna do this where you get a bunch of gaps in between your strokes. Um, because we wanna learn how to apply a really even application of graphite. That's gonna be very important in our drawing to apply with really, really minimal pressure. Now, as you can see, I'm actually moving into these other boxes. And the reason is, so um, hard lead pencils, they have a binder mixed in with the graphite and that's how they create the graphite leads to be harder. Um, and there's something about the binder uh, in those leads that primes the paper really nicely to accept those darker, um, softer leads. So this is how I always do my value scales, um, is that I start out to prime the paper with these harder leads and then I work up to the softer leads. Um, some teachers may teach it differently. They may only do like the 2H in this box and the HB in this box and so on and so forth. However, I just find that if I were to go straight in with a 6B on the paper without priming the paper first, it's gonna look super grainy. It's not gonna look very smooth. So uh, that's why I do it this way, okay? So now that 2H box is complete, I'm gonna move on to an HB lead and I'm gonna start same exact way, but this time I'm starting in the HB uh, box, same amount of pressure that I'm applying here as I continue this value scale with my pencil strokes really close together using the side of my pencil lead. And once again, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring that all the way over, very light touch here. Just helping to prime that paper for those darker leads. Okay, so that's the HB. I'm moving on to my 2B pencil. Uh, I'm gonna just keep going in the same way that I've been doing it, starting now with the 2B box. So you can already start to see that there is a difference. The value is getting darker with each box, even though I'm using the same amount of pressure with each pencil that I apply, I'm doing it in the exact same way. But as you can see, those softer lead pencils do tend to get darker in value. So this will be helpful in our drawing when we wanna get a, a wide range of value applied. Okay, so that is the 2B. Moving on to the 4B pencil. Start out in that 4B box there. As you can see, each one of my graphite pencils are sharpened to a long point. So make sure before you even start your drawing that all of your tools are prepared in this way. All right, last box is my 6B. If you're wondering why this pencil looks weird, it's because this one is a woodless pencil, so it's just like all lead. Uh, really interesting, but it's the same material as the wooden pencils. It's just graphite. Okay, I think that's a pretty even application there. All right, I've got my full range of value here from light to dark. Um, now, obviously, if I were to apply more pressure on top of this, I could get it a little bit darker. However, keep in mind, graphite will never be as dark as a charcoal or an ink. It's just the nature of graphite and that's okay. We can still get a pretty wide range of value and have a nice looking drawing here, okay? So, um, <clears throat> Now, I am going to switch back over to, I would suggest either an HB or a 2B. I, I like the 2B. Um, now, I measured my proportions and all that good stuff. It's looking pretty good. I just want to talk real briefly about some of these objects that are a little more complex. 
just keep in mind everything can be simplified. So for example, this plant here, I went in with some very angular lines as I was going through because that is a way of simplifying the shapes of these leaves on this snake plant, okay? So instead of trying to get the exact curve right in one go, that's very difficult, um, I went in with these angular um, lines and uh, that works out real well for me. I think that's a great habit to get into. Um, let's see, what else can I show you? Uh, same thing with the apple. You could probably tell I kind of went in with these little pencil strokes. You know, I was lining up, you know, okay, the side of this apple, where does that line up with this box? Where does this side line up with the other information? Is it, you know, on the right side of that corner or the left? Uh, what about the bottom of the apple? It kind of lined up with these other objects in the foreground for the bottom of those objects, so I could find the bottom. Um, I would measure, you know, the height compared to the width to make sure that, you know, everything is um, sized appropriately. Uh, you want to make sure that all the different objects are in proportion to each other. Um, you can either, you can even measure negative space in between the objects and compare it to the positive space on the objects. Check and make sure, because like for example this teapot um, has a gap in between uh, the other objects, so you want to make sure that gap is the right uh, measurement as well. So, in other words, there's a lot of time and thought spent in the process before we get to adding the value, right? So again, a uh, construction drawing video will help you get to this point. Um, so uh, now you're probably wondering, well, what about the drapery? There's a bunch of drapery in the background. How do we, um, how do we approach that? It's so overwhelming, so much information. Um, what I would suggest, and I started a little bit, you can see I kind of snuck in a little bit here and there. I would suggest looking for landmarks. Um, certain areas where the drapery uh, folds um, intersect with the other objects that we've already established. So in other words, um, like right here, kind of near that corner, I see that there is a fold that ends right there. And um, it, it goes up somewhere this way. I don't know exactly where, but at least I can put a line down and I can always adjust it later if I want, but at least I can see that there is a fold that ends there um, and there's kind of like a, a little shadow area, um, like, like so. Um, now this fold, I can tell it goes behind the plant because I see another landmark. Right there next to that corner, I can see that's where there is a um, fold. And uh, we have this kind of drapery that, that's folding this way. So there is um, one major fold that I found right there. And there's um, another fold just under that one that I could place right here. And okay, so there's that small fold. The top of this one ends about right there. And there's one more about right there, okay? Um, so I can tell that there's like background information back here. So like this is all fabric and then this is background back here. Um, so that's kind of helpful for me to look at that negative space shape. Um, to see that there is a gap between the edge of this fabric and the edge of my plant. So as I go up with my line, I can see, okay, so there's a gap. I need to make sure there's a gap. Um, now on this side of the plant, the, the fabric ends um, somewhere up here because I can see that this tallest leaf, it's kind of below that point somewhere. So, um, so in other words, all of my fabric is here and then background is over here. Um, so landmarks are a great way to start. Try to um, not pay attention yet to um, the light and the shadow and the curves. Just try to uh, look for landmarks and you can place the lines uh, in simple ways like um, in other words, if you see a little tiny crease in the fabric, ignore those little things. Just look for the biggest 
um, the, the biggest folds, the edges of the folds. That's the important stuff. Little detail stuff can always be added later, like little wrinkles or things like that. Um, usually, if it's real small wrinkles, I don't even draw those in. I just try to focus on the bigger shapes, okay? Um, so, uh, so that's my suggestion for, for how to um, approach uh, the drapery at first. Okay, so I'm just going to put a few um, folds in here to work with. Another thing you, you may have noticed here, hopefully you can see, um, I'm also starting to outline real, the, the really dramatic cast shadows that I'm seeing. So in my scene under the apple, uh, because the light is coming from this direction, there are sh cast shadows. Um, to the left of these objects here. So I actually just outlined the cast shadow under the apple and to the left of the cube over here. Um, all of this area here is a cast shadow from the fabric, so I outlined that. Um, on the teapot here, uh, I could do the same thing the kind of general area of where light turns into shadow. So I think that this is a really great way to start approaching um, value is just kind of determining, uh, like for example, if you are going to break everything down into just three values, the darkest dark, a medium shade, and the, the brightest light, I think that's a great place to start, like on this teapot. This shadow here is the darkest shadow I can see on the teapot, and the brightest area is a bright highlight um, that I can see right there. This is very close to the lamp, so it's getting a real dramatic highlight right there. Um, so separating the shadow and, uh, and light areas on your objects with lines first can be helpful. Just make sure your lines are very soft. You don't want to um, have these harsh lines that are going to flatten your image as you continue your drawing. You just want them to, um, if they're soft like this, using the side of your pencil lead with a light touch, they will be very minimal later on after you add all the value on top, okay? Um, so I'm gonna uh, demonstrate first on, um, on this teapot of, of starting to add some value. Uh, I'm actually gonna switch to my lighter lead pencils, the harder leads, the 2H and the HB, um, because just like with the value scale, I wanna kind of prime my paper first uh, before, um, like for example, if I have a real dark value there, I don't wanna go straight into my 6B. Um, I wanna prime the paper first, so um, I'm actually going to uh, use the 2H over this whole area. Now, of course, if you go a little too dark in some areas, you can always lighten it up with the eraser. So it's really um, hard to make you know, any mistake that you can't rectify in a drawing, right? You can always adjust things. Um, I think the, the only thing that's really, really hard to fix is if you go too dark, or too um, hard with the pressure, uh, because like I said before, sometimes you can't erase um, some marks if you go too harsh with it, uh, if you use a real heavy hand. Um, and in some cases it can actually like dent the paper, so even if you can pick it all up with the eraser, you still have that dent left over, and if you try to draw on top of it, it you're still gonna see that dent. So anyway, um, so like for example, I'm, I'm just applying graphite right over that light area, area because I can always go back with my eraser and pick that back up like that, um, so it's not a big deal, okay? So um, it's nice to have that first layer with the 2H, and then I'll just uh, keep going down the line of darker and darker um, pencils as I need them. 
Uh, so now I can see that there is a bright highlight on the spout right there. So I'm going to concentrate my darker shade below that because all the shadows are on the on this left lower side of the objects. Um, now, if you want everything to look really even, I do recommend keeping um, the direction of your pencil strokes in a similar direction um, within whatever layer you're doing. Uh, like for example, if you wanted to switch it up like, you know, I'm gonna move now into a 2B pencil to make this shadow even darker, um, I could do a different direction with this layer, but within that layer, I'm gonna keep everything same direction just because it helps with keeping uh, the application of the graphite looking nice and even. Um, so that, that's just a tip. You don't have to do it that way, but I think what's more important is keeping your pencil strokes very close together so because if you get a lot of gaps in between your pencil strokes that's when it starts to look super messy and it's hard to fix that um, but anyway as you can see I'm starting to get a range of value now that I am layering so the key is layering here I'm layering up these delicate layers to get that range of value. Okay, um, yeah, I could go a little bit darker than that. I'll uh, move on to my uh, 4B, and I'll just lay that in in some areas that I wanna get even darker. So I am still using a very light touch here. Okay, so the only area I'm gonna use that 6B is the darkest area, which is inside of the teapot spout, just there. Okay, so that's looking pretty good so far. Um, so as you can see, once you get the hang of um, how to apply the graphite, it actually can go pretty fast if you're using these this layering technique with a light touch using the side of the pencil lead. Um, it didn't take me very long to do that whole section. Um, and I'm keeping it very simple. As you can see, there's maybe like one, two, three, four, maybe about four or five different values here um, because I broke it up into different sections. So, um, you can always get more detailed with it later, but I would suggest treating the whole drawing like this first um, so that you don't get too caught up with detail stuff, which can be very time consuming and it can uh, distract you from the other areas of the drawing. And you might find later you have to adjust something and then you wasted all this time perfecting a certain area and then you just have to erase it. So hopefully that makes sense that doing it um, in these kind of like little compartments like this is a way to simplify and have your drawing happen faster and more accurately, okay? Um, so the other objects would be treated in a similar fashion. Um, I would also like to show you how to do this with um, some drapery. So I'm gonna switch back to my 2B so that I can kind of um, look at my construction here again. Uh, let's see, try to map out the rest of this little area. Um, there's one line here. So this part just kind of wraps around here and there's a line there and a fold right here. Um, as you can see, I drew the box as if it were see-through, but now because this drapery wraps around it, I'm just gonna erase that corner where this is wrapping around. Um, so still using some angular lines where I need to, to kind of simplify this area. And I always draw the new line before I erase the old line. 
Okay, now actually what I'm doing right now with my hand is a good example of something not to do. I just uh, rested my hand on this area where I applied a bunch of graphite and now I've got graphite on my hand which means if I go to other areas I'm just gonna spread it around and, and put a bunch of smudges on my drawing. So instead of doing that, um, use anything like a piece of scratch paper or something to um, put in between your hand and your drawing so that you can still rest your hand down for some control without smudging your paper. So um, I'm just gonna use this little piece of plastic. Let's see, so here we just get a little fold there. And if you see some really dramatic cast shadow areas, go ahead and outline that. Okay, so going back to my 2H pencil, I'm just going to uh, fill in very lightly the area that I'm going to work on um, right now, the area that I want to focus on. Okay, so that's my first layer of the 2H. I'm gonna move on to the next darkest layer, the HB, and I'm just gonna recognize, or I'm just going to identify which areas are, are the darkest and which areas are the lightest. There's a couple bright highlight areas right there, right here, right here. Um, and then areas that get darker, this cast shadow on the box definitely gets darker. So I'll quickly lay that in. So even though I know that this is gonna get darker, I'm still using the layering technique, okay? Uh, there's a little shadow right here that's very dark, so I'm gonna do that. Uh, let's see, right in here gets a little darker. Okay. Right in here. And um, I'm just gonna thicken some of these lines, some of these creases that look a little bit darker. Oh, and definitely this cast shadow here. This area here. I'm going to move on to my uh, let's see, 2B. Now, I'm uh, in my drawing, these are very similar values. In real life, the shadow behind the teapot 
right around here is darker, so I'm going to make sure that I take care of that in my drawing so that I don't lose that edge of the teapot. So maybe apply a little bit of 4B on top of that to darken that shadow there. Okay, so now you can see that there is that uh, separation there in the values. Okay. Uh, moving right along, uh, let's see what other areas here need to get a little bit darker. Don't forget that if you need to move your drawing around to um, be able to have a good angle to apply your lines can be very helpful. Okay, now in my drawing, these values are very similar, but in real life, uh, there is one shadow here in that corner which gets much darker. So I'm going to give some attention to that area. Maybe add a little bit of 4B on top of that. So the only time I break out that 6B is for extremely dark areas, like the inside of that um, teapot area. Don't, uh, I don't like to overuse the 6B. And I'm gonna reinforce this line a little bit. Okay. So as you can see, that little area is coming to life now. Um, and again, just like the teapot, I probably only have like five different values represented there uh, because I identified the darkest dark, the lightest light, the medium, and then, uh, you know, that's a good place to start when you're looking back and forth between the setup and your drawing. Um, just look for those landmark areas. Um, which areas are, uh, you know, where you can see edges or lines that intersect. Um, landmark areas such as very um, dark in value areas or light in value, like little highlight areas. Um, that would be a great place to start to not get overwhelmed by uh, the visual overload of um, information that you're looking at. So as you can see, I don't have any real harsh outlines on my items. Um, everything has a little bit of softness uh, which helps you go for that realism style. Uh, it helps things to look more convincing. When you have harsh outlines around your objects, your drawing will start to look more flat uh, and illustrative, or like, you know, uh, the way uh, like a cartoon might be drawn, you know, you've got, um, because in real life things don't really have those harsh outlines, right? So that's why it's so important to keep that soft touch using the side of your pencil lead for the majority of the drawing. So you can adjust things accordingly when you need to. So I hope that this little demo was helpful, uh, for you all to get started with applying value with graphite pencils as well as how to get started with approaching difficult organic information such as the drapery. Um, my suggestion again is look for landmarks, uh, really give yourself a good solid map uh, before you start in with the value.
So good luck with your drawings. Uh, one last review is uh, you want to start out using thumbnail drawings, simple shapes, sighting technique, lay in a good composition using the construction drawing method. Go ahead and do that value scale in the upper right hand corner with your pencils. Um, once your proportions and everything are looking good, um, go ahead and start laying in uh, some value using the side of your pencil lead, a uh, light touch with the pencil, pencil strokes close together, um, and trying to simplify. The key is simplifying the information as much as you can, which takes practice, so don't worry if it's not looking the way that you want it to look. Um, as long as you understand these tools, the more you practice over the years, things will really click, but it won't happen immediately. So try not to get frustrated if it's not happening right away. It, it does take time and practice. I spent six years in college getting my bachelor's of fine art in painting and drawing and then took four years after that uh, working on my portfolio and then two years more of grad school for painting um, and then I've had three years so far of teaching experience teaching these foundation classes so many years that I've had of practice to get to this point so if you are just starting out um, keep in mind that art art is a long process and um, and th that's exactly what it is it's a process there's no specific point where all of a sudden you know how to draw um, you can always learn more and it takes a very long time lots of patience and dedication so um, so just be aware that these are helpful tools to learn now, but um, it will take some practice to, to see uh, results. It, it takes some time. So once again, thank you for watching my video and good luck with your drawings.